Hello. I have um, a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU right here. Today is the 3rd of November, I think. Is it the 2nd? Not got a clue. Anyway, whatever. It's before they come out. They come out on the 5th. I ordered this off eBay on the 30th of October and it arrived this morning. I've already tested it, already posted scores on hardware bot. So you might have seen them if you've been looking. And uh, yeah, it's a real CPU. This was £200, £3 postage. Got the CPU only. And yeah, it's pretty much cheaper than buying it new retail when it comes out. And I've got it early. So yeah, there you go. It's real. I'm going to put it in my system now. And uh, run some benchmarks for you. And you'll be able to see how it performs. It's pretty quick in single thread. About the same as an old 3600 in multi-thread. So this is the Ryzen 5. 5600X in the system. There's a 3800X scale. You can see the both real CPUs. That's a Patriot Viper Steel 4000 megahertz memory 4400, which probably won't be with XMP because this is AMD platform. I've got a Asus Crosshair 8 Hero, the latest BIOS on. EVGA GT710 just uh, uses graphics because obviously the Ryzen doesn't have onboard graphics and this is being powered by the uh, mighty superflower here so yeah I'm going to put the cooler on and you'll be able to see the performance in Windows here we are in the BIOS you can see we're on the latest version 2311 and yeah, you can see there Ryzen 5 5600X. Everything is on default settings. You can see XMP memory 4400 there. Let's see if it will boot up. So here we are booted into Windows. can see the awful timings there. Let's do the CPU-Z bench first, because it's the first thing that comes up here now. Um, CPU should we go for maybe an 8700K? What do we reckon? I'll bring up another tab of CPU-Z as well, just so you can see uh, what it's boosting to. I'll try and do that as well. So you can see the frequency. So that's a stock 8700K. It's getting absolutely destroyed. And on the multi core, and you can see on the single thread, it's also getting destroyed. Uh, the CPU is boosting up to 4.6 on one core. What else is there on a 2700X? It's about as fast as a 2700X on the multi-core. About a 9900KF. Still a single thread is faster. 3700X is a bit higher, but this is stock, remember. 
an i9 10850K. You can still see the single thread is way faster. And the 16 core, obviously, you know. Anyway, let's run some Cinebench. This is R15. Let's make it a bit smaller. Oops. The voltage reading, by the way, here is pretty accurate. On Asus boards, anyway. I'll open, also open hardware info. So, if I leave that open while we're going... Oh. Can you see the temperature down here somewhere? Yeah, there we go. Frequency. You can see it's around 4.2... 1800 points not bad for stock on air cooling uh, you can see the temperature only reached 55 degrees which isn't that great what voltage was it running at? About 1.2, maybe even less. But it is trying to keep within its uh, power limit, basically. 65 watt TDP, I guess. Right, 1825, that's a bit better enough of this uh, stock benching. Let's get the memory set up a bit better. So we're in now at 3800 on the memory. One to one. Still at uh, pretty much stock on the CPU. Do a Cinebench run quickly here. Eighteen seventeen again. It's fairly rubbish. Let's see if it will go any higher. So now I'm back in Windows, and we're at thirty eight hundred C fourteen, nineteen hundred on the um, on core frequency, whatever it is, FCLK, one to one. And you can see I haven't bothered setting any but the primary timings. And I'm going to run the ADATA64 memory benchmark. So, let's go. It's 53 nanoseconds on the latency, that looks down. Previous gen, I think they were... 60-ish. So that's good. That's weird. Don't know what that means. Let's try again. Yeah, I don't know why it's saying that. I probably need to update it. Anyway. Got the uh, main memory latency there, which is the main thing. So I don't know if that's any good or not. I think this is much better than the old one. Let's get Geekbench 3 up. Going to 64 bit. Another very exciting benchmark that will show the memory performance. There you go, 8,252 on the, on the memory multi-core that is. So I think that's what most people use to measure the memory performance. I think uh, 
10 or 11,000 is what the Bintel CPUs get. So obviously it's still not as good on the memory. But it's not overclocked yet as well. So CPU's still at stock. So let's get into overclocking the CPU. I'll just quickly set a manual voltage in the BIOS and then I'll use the Asus V core thing to bump it up. So here we are in Windows. We've booted in pretty much at what the uh, stock setting was getting, so 1.2 volts manually, 4.2 gigahertz fixed frequency, and 3800 on the memory. Now, if we uh, bring up Cinebench and do a quick run, you'll see we'll get about 1800. You can see it's V drooping down to 1.17 volts ish. There you go, 1815. Now, if I bring up Asus Turbo V here, keep the voltage where it is for now, 1.2 volts, and we're just going to stick the CPU up to 4.4, press apply, you can see over there it's now 4.4 on CPU Z on all of the cores and we can just run again. So there we go, nearly 100 extra points from my 2 second overclock and now we're going to go at 4.5 and yeah, you can see again 4.5 all core here no trickery remember it was running at 4.2 originally might be able to hear the fan a little bit more now still 1.2 volts 1.17 under load and you can see we're now at 1953 and this is stable enough could pretty much run it all day you're probably thinking oh it's all well and good being a Cinebench stable and I would agree There we go, 1953 again. So, let's try something a bit heavier. We'll go with Hardware Bot X265. And we'll do 4K. And we'll go on just normal for now, I think. So this is like rendering a video using the X265 encoder thing at 4K. You can see it's getting pretty decent FPS. And this is only the, uh, the baby 5600X. This isn't like a uh, monster CPU. So yeah, if you're running your gaming rig on air cooling and you just want to stick it at 4.4, 4.5, maybe even 4.6, you can literally just whack it to that speed at 1.2 volts, and you should be okay, unless your sample is significantly worse than mine. There we go, 15 FPS. So the next question I'd ask while I'm at 4.5 GHz is 
What score will it get in the fire strike physics test? You know, play play a few games. So we'll do a run of this and uh, see what happens. Bear in mind we have a GT710 in there. So we'll see what happens. 3D Mark might be a bit confused as to what this CPU is, but oh well. There you go, 24,000. It's pretty decent actually. Alright, what else can we do? Try a uh, time spy. Obviously, CPU test only though. Still at 4.5, by the way. Five thousand six hundred, oh no, five thousand seven hundred and sixty. Very nice. Times by extreme. This test has AVX, so we'll see what happens. Four thousand one hundred eighty one. Boom. Alright, well, so I think that's about it really for CPU benchmarks. There's no point doing the ones because uh, they require potato CPUs. So we're at four point five. I'm gonna go up to four point six. Here we go, 4.6. I am going to run it at that. And then I'll just start the camera again when it's finished. It's at 1.2 volts. Not going to change it because I can't be bothered. So, off it goes. You can see it's doing the single thread test there. There you go. You can see I haven't changed it there. I was going to catch it at the end, but it was so fast. I actually forgot to start the camera before it finished. It scores 253, a Ryzen 9 3900X scored 230, and a 7700K at 5.1, I think, scored 220. So, yeah, it's faster than the Bintel, and faster than the old, out-of-date AMD. These CPUs are extremely fast, single core, extremely fast. And we ain't even going yet, boys. <laughs> right, let's get rid of this. So now that we've finished at this terrible low voltage of 1.2 volts, we are going to start to increase the voltage and see if we can go a little bit higher. So. That's CPU V core. We're gonna go up to 1.25. We're gonna go up to 4.7 gigahertz all core. You can see there, 4.7 all core, 1.25 volts. And oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we'll we'll go. We'll do an R15 first. Why not? Off we go. <laughs> There we go, just over 2,000, imagine my shock. Spectacular, so it's now faster than a i7-5960X at about 5 GHz, and it's faster than a Ryzen 2700X at like 4.4. So for a 6 core it's not doing too bad. I think it's faster than most 8700Ks at that speed as well. So, let's try 4.75, uh, yeah we'll leave the voltage as it is, just see what happens, it might crash, yeah. Right, take number 2, give it some more juice, 1.35 volts. 
So this is literally, we've gone from 1.25 to 1.35 volts for 50 megahertz. I haven't tested this before, just so you know. I only went up to 4.7 initially. I've also put the CPU fan on turbo, so you probably be able to hear it a bit more now. But I don't really care about the sound. It's not really that loud. There you go, 2045. We'll run again. Just to make sure it's extra stable. Gonna run this on water anyway. And uh, it's probably gonna go a couple hundred megahertz faster. Hopefully anyway. Right, we're going 4.8. That is... 1.35 volts, 4.8 gigahertz. Will it work or not? Ah, oh, no. Alright, after my failed attempt at getting it to work at 4.8, uh, we're going to try Precision Boost Overdrive. All I've done is enable it. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Right, we're in Windows with PBO enabled. Don't really know how this works, so I just press enable and uh, let's see what it boosts to. Oh, nice. 4.6 on all cores. We've just PBO enabled. At 1.3 volts. So... It is using 1.3 volts to do about 100 megahertz less than I was. And the score is terrible. Wow. Wow, that score is really terrible. That's hardly better than what it was getting at stock, actually. So it's saying all cores are at 4.65. Yeah, it just performed as if it was at, like, 4.3. Or 4.2. So, yeah, there you go. So, I'm just going to say uh, P flu enabled PVO, thinking you're getting more performance, and saying that manual overclocking is pointless. I literally just got like 1950 points a manual overclock at like 4.5 or 4.6, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, and this is basically the same speed as stock, but the fan's just louder. Anyway, let's see what the single thread is, just out of interest. So, single thread. I still only boost into 4.65. We'll see what it gets. So yeah, there you go, 238, that's pretty rubbish considering PBO is on. It's literally like PBO isn't doing anything other than saying the frequency's higher, but you're not actually getting any more performance, and it's increasing the voltage by 0 0.1 volts and you're not getting any more performance. So, pretty rubbish. Don't use PBO. So apparently I was doing the PBO wrong, so I've gone into the BIOS and gone advanced PBO, and I've just set, oh my god, the TRFC's at 666, that's hilarious. Anyway, um, I was doing it wrong, apparently you just both set all of them to 9999, which is what I've done. So, we'll see how fast it goes, how spicy it gets. I don't really need CPU-Z to be honest because I've got this open which will tell me what the maximum core frequency was but this will give us it in real time. This has got all the temperatures over here and we'll run Cinebench again. Let's see. So it's starting at 4.7, 4.8, quickly drops back down to 6.65. It's running at 1.32 volts which is pretty crazy. And you can see it's just hitting the thermal limit at 76 degrees, 77, and 
literally the performance is hardly any better. I cannot really stress how pointless PBO is even with this mega power limit. It was doing mega clock speeds apparently. Let's have a look here. Oh look at this, it hit 4.85 on multiple cores. Like literally all of them apart from that number 3 there. Hit 4.85 almost. Let's go single thread. Let's see if it can do any better. So you can see it's hitting 4.8 on one core. PBO thing is clearly rubbish. So yeah, again, boosting to like 4.8 gigahertz. Yeah, the performance doesn't match clock speed on PBO. So now, I'm going to do a quick manual OC uh, at like 4.7, maybe 4.8, just to run the single thread, just to show you what it should be like. Right, so here's my manual static 4.7 across all cores on 1.25 volts, single thread. What was it getting before? 240? 230? Don't remember. Anyway, you'll see this beats it by miles in a minute. So, yeah, there you go. Nearly 260. Which is a lot higher. It's more like it. PBO's a fail. Now, we're going to have a word with uh, Buildzoid and see what we can do with this memory, I think. So I've done a bit of memory tweaking and we've now got the memory at uh, 3800C12 and we're going to try running Geekbench for 4.7 GHz again and just see what score we get. There we go, 8700, still not amazing. So, we're looking at memory score here, almost, we're at 8900 now, it's getting a little bit better. So I'm just doing some quick uh, Geekbench 3 scores at 4.95 GHz, um, just testing memory timings basically. Alright, that's better, off we go. Yeah, 7,279, 9,290 on the memory, that's not too bad. So a little bit more tweaking, we're at 9,369 on the memory score, almost 7,300, very close.